In today's news, Olivine Maynard takes guilty plea. Kadeem Maynard signs off on account of events. Waters and Winter receive gun charges. Festival passes sold out in one hour. And the clash between USVI and BVI poker run events explained. But these are more stories when Twit for News return. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman presents Sons in Suits Brunch, a celebration of fathers and sons, at Treasure Isle Hotel on Saturday, June 17th, 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., featuring guest speakers, Deputy Governor of the Virgin Islands David D. Archer Jr., Pastor Courtney Jones, Entertainer Raul Jugusprov, Entertainment by Johanse Smith and Che Pemberton, alongside DJ Molly. Tickets are $75 for a father and son duo and $40 Single tickets, fun, food, fellowship, and fatherhood. Lots of giveaways included. Ticket outlets are CCT flagship stores on Tortola and Virgin Gorda. Calling all fathers, sons, father figures, nephews, and uncles. Sons in Suits 2023, hosted by the Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, a red carpet celebration of fathers and sons. For more information, contact 442-3132. Proudly sponsored by CCT and Tweet4 Media. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy well, welcome viewers to the Tuesday, June 13th edition of 284 News. I am Kamal Haynes, bringing you the latest out of the British Virgin Islands. But leading today's news, Olivine Maynard has pleaded guilty to a count of conspiracy to import cocaine, purportedly in exchange for a more lenient sentence before a U.S. federal court. Maynard appeared before a hearing yesterday, at which point she entered a plea agreement with the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Florida. But the document seen by our news desk stated, and I quote, The defendant agrees to plead guilty to count one of the superseding indictment, which charges the defendant with conspiracy to import cocaine in violation of Title 21 United States Code Sections 963 and 952, end quote. With a new plea entered, prosecutors have reportedly agreed to drop the charges of money laundering and racketeering against her, and the office has agreed to, and I quote, recommend at sentencing that a court reduce by two levels the sentencing guideline level applicable to the defendant's offense, end quote. An additional one level decrease can also be requested should, at the time of sentencing, the defendant's offense level is determined to be 16 or greater. But the request will state that, and I quote, the defendant has assisted authorities in the investigation of prosecution of the defendant's own misconduct by timely notifying authorities of the defendant's intention to enter a plea of guilty, thereby permitting the government to avoid preparing for trial and permitting the government and the court to allocate their resources efficiently, end quote. The terms of the agreement, however, state that the office will not be required to make such recommendations or requests should Maynard fail or refuse to make a full, accurate and complete disclosure to the probation office of the circumstances surrounding the relevant uh, offence be found to have misrepresented facts to the government prior to entering the plea agreement or com commit any misconduct after entering into the plea agreement. But the document stated that Maynard had acknowledged that, for this offense, the court must impose a mandatory minimum term of imprisonment, often 10 years, and may impose a statutory maximum sentence of up to life imprisonment. But time served behind bars will be followed by at least five years of supervised release. But in addition, the court may also impose a fine of up to $10 million or her sentence has not yet been determined by the court. Well, in related news, Kadeem Maynard also pleaded guilty to join his mother, Olivine Maynard, in assisting authorities in the ongoing narcotics trafficking trial, which has embroiled them and former Premier Andrew Foy. The documents seen by our news desk have confirmed that Kadeem Maynard pleaded guilty on a charge of conspiring to import cocaine. But this just hours after his mother made the same move before a federal court in Florida. In return for the guilty plea and agreeing to assist authorities in further investigations, the minors are expected to be treated with leniency during sentencing. 
A key factor of yesterday's proceedings is that the mayors have now signed off on an account of the events that unfolded, detailing their details with an individual who they believe at the time was a member of the Mexican Sinaloa cartel and how they established the link with the then uh, Premier Foy to facilitate the passage of cocaine through the Virgin Islands for a share of the profits. But the mayors both signed off on a factual proffer which stated that between March 16, 2022 and April 28, 2022, they both, along with Premier Foy, conspired with each other and the purported cartel member, who was in fact an undercover DEA agent, to ship thousands of kilograms of cocaine through Tortola to the United States. Activities during that time included several meetings with the purported cartel member agreeing to plan to hold loads of 3,000 kilograms of cocaine in Tortola until it could be shipped to Puerto Rico and the U.S. mainland and deciding to bribe other public officers for furtherance of the scheme. In more uh, news, Kashim Walters and Khalil Winter have both been charged with carrying an unlicensed firearm and unlawful possession of ammunition after the two Glock handguns were seized during a police operation on Saturday. But a confirmation came from the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force who issued a statement to the media on Monday, June 12th. But the police said the two men were apprehended in Parham Town early Saturday morning as a result of continued patrols, particularly hotspot areas around the territory. The 33-year-old Walters of Josiah's Bay and 23-year-old Winter of No Fit's Place of Abode will appear in the magistrate's court at the next available sitting. But the police continue to appeal to members of the public to provide any information that can uh, be made available to rid the territory of illegal firearms. A persons can confidentially call the Crime Stoppers line 800-8477 with the relevant information or contact the Royal Virgin Islands Police Forces Intelligence Unit at 368-9339. Well, up next, festival passes sold out in one hour. Clash between USVI and BVI poker run events explain. And the commissioners Wright and Rogers applauded for strengthening ties between the BVI and Broward County. But these are more stories after a word from our sponsors. We're searching for the extraordinary, the exceptional, the Super Dads. Presenting 284 Media's Super Dad Tribute. It's your chance to honor and celebrate the incredible fathers in your life by submitting a video sharing why your dad is a Super Dad. Whether it's his unwavering support, his sage advice, or his incredible sense of humor, let the world know why your dad is a true superhero. Head over to 284media.com or 284media on Facebook for more information on how to enter. Winners will receive incredible prizes including unforgettable experiences and months of free service from CCT. Enter the Super Dad Tribute Competition and let your dad know he's a real life superhero. Hi, I'm Roti Man. Welcome to Naturally Tasty. This is our Sophie Bay outlet. Sophie Bay, our first indoor outlet. Roti Man here at our Rotan Waterfront Outlet. Here downstairs on the first floor is our grab and go section. And we have an arraignment of items. A lot of people think we only have rotis. We have freshly baked desserts over here. Then we also carry patties, Jamaican patties. We carry croissants, buttermilk biscuits. We have coffee, local bush tea. We carry our rotis, a variety of rotis every day. We have sandwiches, salads, fruit bowls, local juices. We do commercial juices, wines, and beers. We also carry our freshly made frozen products. So for example, we have frozen lasagna. We do shepherd's pie. We do curry chicken, curry vegetables, the quick and easy options. We also sell our rotis in the frozen state. A lot of persons travel with them or you can have it on a boat trip with you. We have so many items to choose from. Which basically is what it is. Grab and go and you can come, sit down and enjoy the plaza, enjoy the beautiful waterfront and just enjoy peace and serenity have it. Naturally Tasty by Roti Man. Thank you Roti Wife.
Welcome back, viewers. Well, the Virgin Islands Festival and Fairs Committee concluded a, a successful first wave of sales for season passes to this year's Emancipation Festival in just one hour after residents flocked to CCT stores in Tortola and Virgin Garda and brought out all the available tickets. But well, our team was on the ground to take in the scene and we spoke to some excited ticket holders who will be attending this year's event. Got my tickets at CCT, looking out live for Carnival 23. My name is John De Trumpet, bringing to you two fresh ad season pass tickets for the new 2023 VI Festival. I'm excited, very much so ready with my big on and my lighter. I look like we're turning up this year. We, we outside again. Oh yeah, man, this village will be hot, should be ready. Um, from time Valiant drop, whoop, 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 whoop. we are hot. Yeah, man. <laughs> I buy these tickets so I could see everybody and happy festival. Through its official Facebook page, the committee announced that the sale will continue tomorrow with Tier 2 Early Bird Specials. A founder and chairman of the One Virgin Islands Poker Run, Dr. Michael Turnbull, has cleared the air following the second annual hosting of the highly anticipated event that is set to clash with the United States Virgin Islands Stars and Stripes Poker Run, which are both scheduled for July 2nd, 2023. Dr. Turnbull confirmed that discussions were had with members of the USVI Stars and Stripes Poker Run, but said the two entities were unable to find a suitable date that best worked for both parties to hold their respective event on separate dates. That's been a, a prominent question. What persons may not know, on last year, we met with the collaborator for that event, and we tried to come to a consensus of the dates and the times. However, we weren't able to find a day that was able to work for both of us because theirs is 4th of July weekend, and ours is Virgin Islands Day and Territory Day. Last year, we were able to move our date around because more see because of weather. However, whatever event you choose to go to, um, you are able to go to. But I can speak for the beautiful Virgin Islands that we have here, and the entertainment, and the waters, and the unique destinations that we're able to do, and why we're doing this. It's not to inevitably have a clash, but it's to make sure that we maximize that weekend. And this is the weekend that worked for us best. Dr. Turnbull said he hopes that the same doesn't occur in 2024 and that the two entities find dates that best fit to allow for the events to be held on separate dates. We're hoping that next year there's not conflicting dates, uh, but we hope that in the future that we can work together as one Virgin Islands. But it just didn't happen this year, but that happens. Most times, two or three restaurants are open on the beach at one time and you choose which restaurant you go to based on your preference. And here, in the beautiful Virgin Islands, in the beautiful BVI, we have amazing food, amazing water, the best terrain, and we are the sailing capital of the world. So if you want the best, you have an opportunity to have that there, but you're free to go. Premier Dr. The Honourable Natalia Wheatley has hinted at future developments between the British Virgin Islands and Broward County after the territory recently received the keys to the county and the day in the city of Tamarack to honour the Virgin Islands. A Premier Wheatley credited Commissioners Honourable Maury Wright Jr. and Honourable Hazel Rogers for the role they played in strengthening the ties between BVI and Broward County during a recent interview with Tweet4 Media. 
Wright currently serves as the commissioner for District 2 in the city of Tamarack, which is located in Broward County, Florida, while Commissioner Rogers serves District 9 in Broward County. Well, we have to thank persons like Honorable Maury Wright, and he's one of the commissioners from Tamarack, uh, the city of Tamarack, in Broward County. He actually grew up right in the BVI. Um, he has um, Jamaican parentage as well as BVI parentage. Um, spent some time between New York, the BVI, Jamaica, South Florida. Now he's a resident of South Florida and, and into politics and into government, an elected official. And the connection with him, I would say, was responsible for some of the things that took place, like the, the declaration of Virgin Islands day to day. And also, of course, his relationship with the other commissioners, particularly Honorable Hazel Rogers, who is a, a really a heavyweight in politics and government in southeastern Florida. Someone who is a former state representative, and I believe former mayor of Lauderdale, I, th I think the name of it is La Lauderdale Rivers, is the name of the city, which is one of the cities in Broward County. And they were instrumental in having um, the keys handed over to us from Broward County. Dr. Willie also said that it signals the type of connection that the officials of Broward County want to establish with the BVI. And it really signals the type of partnership and the type of connection that they want to establish with the Virgin Islands. And I think that's something that we can build on in terms of um, business relationships, certainly uh, educational relationships with the schools there. We have quite a number of, of students who go to school in southeastern Florida, cultural ties, etc. Lots of persons are there from the Caribbean. So it's something that we should build on. The Premier also took the time to explain the symbolism of receiving the keys and says the BVI will have much more taking place in Broward County. It's something symbolic. It's something that is a symbol of the friendship that is established between one group of people and another. It's really a, a, a sign of respect. And it's something that commemorates the inaugural flights and something that's supposed to really push us towards having a much stronger, much better relationship uh, with that area of Florida. And it's something that we definitely welcome. Uh, it's a, we want more passengers from Broward County. Uh, we want more passengers from southeastern Florida. Uh, and, you know, we want to really reciprocate the type of respect that they've shown us, reciprocate that. So you can expect that we will be having much more taking place in Broward County. Similar to, to what has happened in, in London, where we, ha we have that strong presence in London based on the fact that we have an office in London. So we, we are looking to have a, a strong presence, a much stronger presence in southeastern Florida because a lot of our passengers come from there. Uh, we have a lot of students there, a lot of people living there, and it only makes sense that we establish a stronger presence there. Well, up next, secondary curriculum review to be conducted and the Premier Weekly to host UN delegation this week. With well, these stories, when Twit4 News return. When you're in need of air conditioning, installation, repairs, or replacement services, Markinson Air Conditioning and Refrigeration has the professional technicians, equipment, parts, and ACs to get the job done right. Markinson Air Conditioning and Refrigeration carries top brands like Daikin, Aircon, Mitsubishi and more. We're open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Located in Fish Bay. Telephone 340-4114 or 343-9511. Markinson Air Conditioning and Refrigeration. Providing exceptional services to the British Virgin Islands since 2015. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. 
first of all, right, you, you have footwork. Stephen Payne. That was a 9 out of 10. I know you got the service down pat. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps... And as you can see, it's actually... <laughs> you're feeling it. Lonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrells. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Bream. It bites. It will bite. Think it. <laughs> <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. Well, welcome back viewers and thank you so much for sticking with us. A review of the secondary curriculum in the Virgin Islands will be on the way shortly to distinguish whether the curriculum is meeting the needs of secondary students. For one month, Dr. Aniko Bo will be in the territory conducting interviews as well as focus group meetings and surveys from various stakeholders. She sat down with our Ron Grant to discuss the scope of the project. So far who I've spoken to already, it's the same response. They're like, Dr. Bo, no, no. Right? And so it's like, okay, we have this idea that it's not, but where's the data to show it? Okay. And so when we, when we want to, in terms of moving our education system forward and in terms of progress, we really need data to say what is what and not just go based on our feelings or our opinions. And you need the data to make decisions. Understood. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is, of course, uh, why you are in the territory to collect that data. Yes, that's it. So let me just give you a little background sure. about myself. So I am faculty at, at Rutgers University in New Jersey. I'm also a former secondary teacher here. I taught at the, we used to call it the BVI yes. high school, right, between 2003 and 2006 inside the science department. And so, I, so I've taught there. I have taught in the Bahamas. I'm originally from the Bahamas. Okay. I was born and raised there. And I've taught inside the United States in Minnesota. And as an educator, what I saw what that was very common to all our systems was that we were going about making decisions without data. Mm -hmm. You know, they were based on our feelings. Oh, yeah, this is working. No, this is not working. Well, how do you know? Mm, it doesn't feel right. Or the students, yeah, giving me certain feedback. And so really, though, you really need, you really need objective data to make decisions to, as to whether you want to continue into something or to stop it. Dr. Bo shared her background in education and research. And so I'm partnering with the Ministry of Education and also with uh, Dr. Yamraj at okay. the college. And she is, we are working together to how do we go about doing this study in terms of getting local voice, local voices to inform our curricula. So part of our, part of our plan is that I am here for a month okay. to interview, to host focus groups and give out service, just asking people their opinion, right? And so what, as a researcher, I believe that the voice of the people is more important. So people might look at me and say, oh yeah, she's the expert, you know, she's coming in to tell us what we should be doing. No, I don't, I don't believe, that is not my stance as a researcher. I believe that um, the innovation and the expertise and the ideas come from the people. And so for me, my role as a researcher is to collect all the ideas and then present them and say, hey, you know, this is what your people are saying. This is what this this is. These are the great ideas. Ideas that are context specific, okay. right? Because that's one thing we do a lot inside the islands. We borrow from abroad, right? Like, oh yeah, the U.S. is doing this. Oh yeah, the U.K. is doing this, and it doesn't work here, right? It might. A lot of times it doesn't work in those other places too, Correct. but we don't get to see that, right? And so, what what are our own homegrown solutions mm. that we can esteem and move forward with? Amazing. And mind you, yes, we can get ideas from abroad, but I wouldn't say to adopt them blindly, to really let local voice and expertise shape those ideas and move them forward. Additionally, she shared the importance of data and proper research in this regard. So it's a broad oversight. So within your Education Act, the curriculum ought to be evaluated, I think, every eight years okay. or so. And so this, this project really is quite timely because it's really getting, you know, getting all our stakeholders' voices to evaluate the curriculum. And it's the secondary curriculum we're looking at. Okay. Mind you, people have said to me, oh, you know, what about the elementary curriculum, the primary school level? I'm like, ah, let's, let's like, start off small, right? Let's not bite off more than we can chew. Absolutely. But absolutely, it's the entire K-12 curriculum that we need to evaluate. So it's focused on the secondary Secondary curriculum. only. Perfect. I want you to speak to the general public, the entire Virgin Isles, because you will yes. be interacting with many of them, uh, having conversations, as you said, focus groups, meeting, mm -hmm. uh, taking survey. I want you to speak about the importance of their participation in yes. this process. Your participation is vital. Here is my phone number. I have a local number, 441 
5593. Please text and call me and give me your opinion. I do have a set of questions I would like to ask, but also if you just want to give your story and just say, hey, the, you know, this is this is the conversation I want to have, please do so. Now, I've noticed my WhatsApp for my local number is not working, but definitely text me or, um, or call me and let's go from there. It is important. So I want parents to call, students to call, secondary students. We want employers, employees. We also want um, um, faculty at the college and college level students to call in as well and just share your opinions. For persons who wish to participate in this process, Dr. Bull shared how she could be reached. So the expectation is that the ministry takes um, the, the reports, the data, do, do their own critical analysis. But really, how can we how can we take now these voices and move the curriculum forward? Now that will take time because I mean, from my experiences, when you're doing curriculum evaluation and then uh, revamping, that can take at least a couple years, okay. right? I mean, and so it's getting boards together, like who are stakeholders, hey, you know, to serve on this exec board for doing the, the curriculum design or revamping, and also to maybe identifying experts who are here. And also, of course, too, if you want to uh, um, involve experts in, with other Caribbean islands, nations, and, and even from elsewhere, to go ahead and do so, but really to take the data and to use it. Understood. Because that's one thing, so because I've partnered with um, other Caribbean governments before, and so it's really important to me that they take the data collected and actually use, use it. For the full interview, visit all 284 media platforms. We'll move into our final story where Premier and Minister for Tourism, Culture and Sustainable Development Honorable Dr. Natalia Wheatley will be hosting United Nations Resident Coordinator Mr. Didier Trebak and several UN heads of agencies this week. Where the Premier will meet with the UN officials from June 14th to 15th to advance the implementation of the country implementation plan. But the CIP details various areas of technical assistance to be rendered by the UN in partnership with the government of the Virgin Islands. The bilateral discussions will focus on ensuring that the Virgin Islands achieves its sustainable development goals in addition to other high priority areas of the government of the Virgin Islands. For commenting on the uh, meeting, Premier Wheatley said, and I quote, I look forward to welcoming the high-level UN delegation to have bilateral talks to further the Virgin Islands National Sustainable Development Plan. Among other things, we will discuss the most effective methods to implement the plan and the progress of, exit, of, exiting, uh, of existing United Nations programs in the territory, end quote. But the country implementation plan details a specialized institutional system tailored to the Virgin Islands that directly addresses national concerns and regional priorities. But the plan will also be operationalized as a programming tool that will strategically confront developmental challenges in the territory. Well, viewers, that's all we have for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284media and tweet for BVI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Kamal Haynes, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye-bye. Yeah, eh, eh, eh. Father Jesus, that learn you along like church so is. Hmm. All right, you enjoy the rest of the day. Next customer line, please. Hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come this. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut front of people. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, take care of me. How may I assist you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You want a top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Join the pre-made party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top of is sold and top of your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top of power? Eh? At home or on the go, watch CCT Live. Download our app and carry your favorite TV shows, news, or live sports anywhere you go. Visit cctbvi.com forward slash live, select your package, and tune in.